Good afternoon and welcome to the 28storms.com and Hurricane Tracker app tropical weather update for Friday, September 30th. Hurricane Ophelia has defied all hurricane intensity forecast expectations. Maximum sustained winds are now 115 miles per hour, making this a major Category 3 hurricane. And there is the chance that Ophelia could intensify a little bit more over the next 24 hours. The good news is that the track forecast is holding steady, and the track takes it just to the east of Bermuda. Although tropical storm force winds cannot be rolled out, thus that is the reason why the National Hurricane Center has tropical storm watches posted for the island, and there is a chance that those could be upgraded to tropical storm warnings. The latest model consensus still takes the center and the strongest winds of Hurricane Ophelia just to the east of Bermuda, which is certainly good news. And several of the models displayed on this map would take this a little bit to the south and east of Newfoundland, although some of the more reliable dynamical models are still showing a fairly rough period of 12 hours of significant weather, especially along the extreme southeast coast of Newfoundland, especially just to the south of St. John's. Also, a little bit more into the central Atlantic, we're still dealing with Tropical Storm Philippe. Maximum sustained winds are 50 miles per hour. And the track forecast is rather uncertain, especially during the four to five day period. But the latest track forecast from the Hurricane Center has this moving in a general westerly track over the next five or so days. And some of the extended range models would still imply that the remnants of Philippe, or even if it does maintain tropical storm status, will eventually make that turn more toward the right and more than likely end up to the east of Bermuda. But that is a very extended forecast and interest in the island are advised to keep a close watch on both of these systems. Here is a quick look at the spaghetti model plots for Tropical Storm Philippe and especially by day five look at the model spread. We have models ranging anywhere from well to the south of Bermuda to well east of Bermuda. So we will just keep a close eye on how things pan out over the next 48 hours and we will just have to adjust the forecast accordingly. This afternoon's basin-wide satellite imagery shows that much of the Atlantic tropics are quiet, excluding our two tropical cyclones in the north central Atlantic. Hurricane Ophelia definitely has the presentation of a powerful hurricane. The eye is now much better defined compared to what it was yesterday evening. But the good news is that if you pay attention to the forward motion, especially over the last six hours, it looks like it's beginning to make a turn more toward the north. In fact, it now looks like it's moving due north. And that is relatively good news because it's not quite at the longitude of Bermuda, which is almost at 65 degrees west longitude, and there is Bermuda right there. And eventually, Ophelia should begin to bend more toward the east with time. So we are still fairly confident that the inner core of Ophelia, along with all the hurricane force winds, should remain just to the east of interest there. However, there is still a fairly good chance that you could experience some tropical storm force winds. Turning to the latest infrared, you can also see that the eye is very well defined even on the enhanced infrared this afternoon. And off toward the east, we still have Tropical Storm Philippe, but it's not quite nearly as impressive, and that's due to that strong trough over much of the northeast Atlantic, and it looks like conditions out there will remain only marginally favorable at best over the next 72 hours. Switching over to the eastern Pacific, we are looking all clear in the open waters this afternoon. We do have a couple isolated pockets of convection, but nothing is overly organized. And the tropics in the eastern Pacific should remain relatively quiet for at least the next 48 hours. However, there are some indications that we could see another uptick in activity before the end of the 5-7 to seven day forecast period. Looking ahead, starting off with the 12Z run of the Canadian CMC model. The CMC is now finally taking Hurricane Ophelia just to the east of Bermuda. This model has been the most biased toward the west and in fact it was taking Ophelia directly over the island for the past several model cycles but now we have a much better model consensus which increases forecaster confidence and as we stop this especially at day six notice that it takes the second tropical storm I'm talking about Philippe just to the east of Bermuda and then by 144 hours it is well to the south of Newfoundland this system is more than likely going to recur much more toward the southeast so impacts along the Canadian Maritimes should not be there unlike what we're seeing with Ophelia over the coming days and it has a very active pattern out here in the eastern Pacific I don't think it's going to be quite this active the CMC is developing a tropical cyclone out there within the next 72 hours that appears to be a little bit too aggressive but I certainly would not discount the possibility that we could have another tropical system out there within the next week switching over now to the 12Z run of the GFS model 
we see that it quickly recurves Hurricane Ophelia just to the east of Bermuda. But by day six and day seven, we see that there is still the need to closely follow Philippe as it shows this system not being fully picked up by the trough all that quickly. In fact, it's still meandering just to the south of Bermuda by the end of the forecast period. And in terms of any eastern Pacific development, it's not quite developing any particular system, although it does show that the intertropical convergence zone could be a little bit more active than what we are currently witnessing out there. The tropics may become a little bit more interesting than what they have been if we go ahead and take the ECMWF forecast verbatim. Starting off at 24 and 48 hours, notice that Hurricane Ophelia has made that recurve just to the east of the island, but then by 72 hours, it's beginning to pass over southeast Newfoundland, including St. John's. By 96 hours, it's now fully out of the picture, but we're still dealing with a minimal tropical storm just to the southeast of Bermuda. By day five, it's passing rather close. However, the forecast intensity is expected to be very minimal, and we have another approaching trough, and much like the Canadian CMC, by day six, whatever is left of Philippe is forecast to be moving well out to sea and continuing to move in a northeast fashion. If we go ahead and rewind this run just a little bit though, starting off again with the zero hour and then advancing into day one and day two, we do begin to see another broad area of low pressure begin to develop in the Gulf of Tehuantepec. By day three, we definitely have a developing tropical cyclone to the south of Mexico. The good news is that it's well offshore and continuing to move west-northwest. If this were to impact Mexico, it would have to be in the extended forecast period. I'm talking within the next five to 10 days and it would have to recurve beyond day five if a trough begins to dive into the eastern Pacific and that could induce more of a northeast turn. We'll get more into that in just a second. But there's also some interesting features that the European is beginning to show in the Atlantic Basin as we go into days five, six, and day seven. Notice that we now have a very strong area of surface high pressure dominating much of the United States eastern seaboard. Usually this type of pattern would indicate to forecasters that we should begin to pay a little bit more attention to what is occurring in the Southwest Caribbean. Now, the European is not showing much of anything down there for the first seven days, and obviously anything within seven to ten days is rather far out and difficult to forecast, so you must take this model solution with a grain of salt. But as we go into day nine, and especially day ten, the European model is trying to develop a tropical cyclone of some sort here, just to the south of Cuba, and south of the Florida Peninsula. So this is going to be a pattern worth watching as long as we have a very strong area of surface high pressure here as denoted by the model. We could easily get some mischief here in the Western Caribbean. So we've already looked at the CMC and GFS model forecasts for the next six to seven days, but does the extended European have any model support for Western Caribbean mischief? Well, the Zero Z CMC version is available through 10 days and it is indicating that we will be dealing with a lot of broad low pressure across much of the southwest Bahamas and northwest Caribbean. We see a 1,002 millibar surface low located just to the east of Miami, and we also have a tropical cyclone located just to, to the southwest of Haiti. Now, surely we're not going to have two separate tropical cyclones, but basically the one main thing that you can take from the solution is that the CMC is in agreement that we will have to at least be monitoring a broad area of low pressure that could extend from the Northwest Caribbean into the Southwest Atlantic. If you recall, the ECMWF model was definitely developing a tropical system by day 10. This is the 12Z GFS day 10 forecast. We do have a broad area of low pressure well to the Southwest in the Caribbean, and it actually does develop this into a tropical cyclone, but this is nearly a two week forecast. So once again, this is mainly for entertainment purposes, but there are some indications that we could see some development. But there is more to look at than simply the sea level pressure forecasts stemming from the model guidance. We also have to observe the Madden-Julian oscillation. It has been proven that certain phases of the MJO are more favorable for tropical development in the Atlantic than others. And as the MJO advances into phase 8, notice that the average number of named storms per every 100 days in each phase, it increases from 3.6 in phase 7 to 6.2 in phase 8. And if it all the way goes around back to phase one, it increases even more to 6.4. And phase two is typically your most active with an average of 7.5 storms, but even 6.3 is fairly good for phase three. And these stats are compiled from Colorado State and Dr. Claude's back. 
So this is a very important indicator. So why would I bring up those stats? Well, there are some indications from the model guidance that the MJO could be moving into a more favorable state, especially toward the middle part of this upcoming October. It's currently between phases five and six, but notice what the model forecasts are indicating. It's more than likely going to end up in phase eight by the middle part of the month. And it's not just this model that is supporting such an idea. We have a fairly good model consensus which is indicating nearly the same thing. And as mentioned before, once we get into phase eight, and especially if this were to eventually move into phase one, that is when conditions could become much more favorable. And finally, as the MGO becomes more favorable, it's going to be coming in from the Western Pacific. It could begin to increase the Eastern Pacific activity initially. So this will be the first area to watch. And then eventually that could expand into the Western portion of the Atlantic Basin, including the Caribbean. And the final thing I'll show before I wrap up this video, recall that the European was developing a tropical cyclone to the south of Mexico by 72 hours. This is what results by day six. The tropical cyclone is well offshore, but notice that we have a trough beginning to amplify over Southern California by day seven and day eight. Notice that the trough is still there over the Baja Peninsula and by day nine, the model is indicating the possibility that the storm could be recurred by this trough. So we are going to be closely monitoring both the Eastern Pacific and the Western half of the Atlantic Basin for the better part of the next two weeks. So that wraps up your tropical weather update for this Friday. Please stay tuned to 28storms.com and the Hurricane Tracker app throughout the weekend for more hurricane-related weather updates.